He's like the love, love, love and music. Hello, everyone. Thank you for tuning in. I am Jay Lee. Yes, I'm moving the camera. Y'all know how I do. I am Jay Lee. This is Jay Lee's Corner. And this is my review for tonight's episode of The Real Housewives of Atlanta. This is season 10, episode 7. And I hope everyone had a great day. It's currently Sunday. I can't wait to get this work restarted. I have a four days to work and then I'm off. Um, I'm on vacation until I go back on the 2nd. So I love when I have, you know, the last, the end of the year off just to kind of chill out and be with family, you know, and just kind of chill and relax and get better and stuff. So, you know, that's what I can't wait to do. I will still be doing, I'll still be doing reviews over, you know, when I'm off work um, for the day the shows come on. I have a couple other little special videos that I'm going to have up um, over the holiday. Um, yeah. <sighs> my boob hurts a little bit, people, so that's why I'm a little off a little bit. Y'all already know everything, but, you know, we here, we're going to have, a, you know, we're going to have this little conversation, as I said, because this is me having a conversation with anyone watching me. So, you know what I'm saying? It's like a phone conversation, like a FaceTime conversation, like a, a glad conversation. Maybe not glad, because glad be getting a little bit weird sometimes. But, you know, still a conversation between me and y'all. Um, So, this particular episode... I mean, I feel like it was long. Like, you know how hours sometimes isn't really an hour. Sometimes an hour is like three or four hours. I feel like this was, hour was like three or four hours long. I don't know if it was because they was just talking too dang on much or what was going on. But I was like, um, I'm just ready for it to kind of be over. And it was just a lot. You know, we see how it starts off. and it, But it was a lot of bull crap too. Um... We see how Sheree is shopping for doors for her basement. You know, the basement ain't been fixed. Look, it took Sheree 13,000 years to build Chateau Sheree. And she's still working on the basement. You know, it's a huge house. It's going to take her some time to get the house built out. Portia come, her and Portia shopping together. I mean, I almost feel like Portia don't have no scenes of her own. And the ones she do have on her own are boring. But I also feel like that with Sheree, too. Like, I don't, you know, it's like neither one of them have, like, an interesting storyline. Except Sheree in this game. We'll talk about Sheree's storyline at, at the end of the um, review. But anyway, they had this little door shop or nice little, you know, furniture, I would say. Because it was different, like, lamps and doorknobs and all the stuff in there. But it's real, real fancy. Sheree was saying how she wants her basement to have, like, a theater room. She wants it to have a spa. I mean, okay, you got it. Want it, build it. You know, if you build it, they will come. So, she walks around saying she wants, like, double, do double doors, which makes sense because her house is very big. And you don't want to have a big house and small doors. It looks weird. It looks like a giant lives there, but also, like, a little person lives there. And they're trying to do both at the same time. You can't do both at the same time. So, you know, she's looking at these different doors or whatever. One door costs like $9,000. Look, I'm not trying to be shady. And I just don't feel like Sheree should be getting the doors that cost $9,000. I think Sheree should go down to Sears, you know, go to Kmart. Um, she can go to Gardner White. Like, we have a Gardner White in the art band here. I don't know if y'all had those, but y'all that. But, like, go to down to, like, a regular furniture store. You know, go to Home Depot, go to Lowe's. Get you a little, you know what I'm saying, four, five. Even if you want to spend a thousand on the door, you're going to go to a place that the doors, one door costs $9,000 and you need two doors and that's just for one part of it. Girl, by sure, going to go bankrupt, you know, trying to build this lo lovely little, little, little mansion, you know, with her and her lonesome. And I get a person build their dream home and they want it to be everything they want it to be. But I feel like a person should never go broke but in a dream home. Because you can say, well, I, it's paid for and it's mine and can't nobody take it from me. Well, what if you can't afford the, the monthly notes on it? What if you can't afford to pay the DTE bill? Which is the, like the lights and gas. I don't know if you have DTE there either. DTE wherever you are. The light and gas with the water bill because you got this big ass mansion and you didn't waste it all the water bill money on a goddamn on door in the basement. 
girl, bye. I just can't deal with it. You know what I'm saying? So, from there, we see, you know, they talking or whatever. Portia and uh, and Sheree. And Portia was asking Cynthia if she had talked to... <laughs> Portia was asking Sheree, had she talked to Cynthia since they came back from their trip? You know, when Cynthia was kind of upset with the whole Kenyan thing. And she says, no, whatever. That she hasn't talked to her um, since she's been back. And then Portia said, like, it was so sad, you know, to see her upset. You know what I'm saying? But I feel the same way. I couldn't imagine... If my friend got married and they didn't tell me or they didn't invite me, Portia, hush. Because your cheap ass don't even want to go fly to Shamia's wedding. Shamia is your best friend and she invited you to her wedding in Africa and you don't want to pay for the flight. So, I mean, girl, bye. Um, and plus, you know, Kenya even said on social media last week, you know, when she, you know, when the episode aired with Cynthia being kind of upset that she wasn't invited, Kenya said, my father wasn't even invited. We loped. Like, there wasn't anyone invited. You know what I'm saying? Um, now, I don't know if his people was there. Because, I mean, the photo did show some people sitting there. So, I don't know what the people was. But, but I think at this point, we know Kenya's married. I'm starting to get sick, so I know I'm going to start, start sounding like nasally. I'm sorry. But, um, we know Kenya got married at this point. She's married. She has a real husband. Now, how long she going to stay married? Is the question. I'm surprised ain't nobody asked her yet to see a marriage license. But, you know, we're going to let Kenya be happy. She, you know, has pictures with this man. Other people have not met this man. So, she's married. Let it be what it's going to be. So, then Portia goes from asking about Kenya's, you know, situation and, and Cynthia's situation to asking Sheree, is she married? I'm like, Portia in, in her dish nation on. And she asked all the good, hard-hitting questions because of a... A photo came out months ago, of course, it's around the time this was being shot, and it was Sheree with her little prison bay, and her shirt said wifey, and they was all hugged up prison pose like, you know what I'm saying, everybody who's ever been to a prison and visited Boo or Bay, I've done it once or twice in my life, long, long time ago, long time ago, I was like 20, um, you pose up your pictures or whatnot, and the sister shirt said wifey, and she was posed up with a boo, you know, of course, was like, you like, is you married? Like, what's going on with you? Are you in love with somebody and whatever? You know, Sheree says, no, I'm not married. You know what I'm saying? But when he gets out, you know, as long as he is who he said he is, I can see us getting married. <sighs> I'm going to save my comments to the end because when she had the whole thing at the end, I'm going to talk about that. So, we then see Candy comes over to visit Cynthia, which is a cool little thing. Now, Cynthia got a whole cross wall when you walk into her house. I mean, it seems I, because the, the crosses all look, um, they don't look holy. They look decorative. And I think if you're trying to really be, you know what I'm saying, to Jesus, you want to be, like, real and not decorative. I was like, girl, you better just get your picture of Jesus up there and then just say peace be on to you and don't come to this house that you come in this house to bless it. It's what I would have done. But, you know, everybody different. So, you know, Kenny's there. We then see how uh, Kenya also comes and they're having a whole, you know, little sister circle meeting or whatever just, just to talk. You know, and Cynthia, you know, asked Kenya. This is the first time they've seen Kenya since she left to go bury her grandmother. And Cynthia asked a question that I hate the people ask. How was the funeral? Well, Cynthia, how do you think it was? You think it was fun? Huh? No. Funerals are never fun. And I know she didn't mean any harm when she asked it. But it's the same way, like, when somebody passes away, you're like, oh, how you doing? Well, bitch, I'm fucked, I'm fucked up, okay? I don't feel like doing shit. I'm depressed. I want to cry. I'm, you know, I'm grief-stricken or whatever. But people still ask it because it's like a... Um, a reflux to ask that question, like, oh, how was this? How was the funeral? Well, when she asked, can you that? Can you say, well, you know, it was a funeral. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? She did say how um, her husband came. And I'm like, well, bitch, why wouldn't he? Like, that's what husbands do. You come to the funeral. If your wife, mother, grandmother passes away, he goes to the funeral. So, you know, that was good. But I'm guessing the funeral was probably in Detroit. So he probably had to fly from New York to Detroit. So, you know, but I'm happy that she was able to get through the service and get, you know, their husband. It was great, you know, peace be on to that family. So then King, uh, Cynthia brings up the whole, you know, we was in, when you left, it was a whole thing. I got emotional. I was ever at first met at the ladies for bringing up, you know, the fact that I haven't met Mar uh, Mike, what's the Mark? Matt. No, what name? What is, what's her husband's name? 
I can't think what her damn husband name. What's her husband's name? Damn it, it doesn't matter her husband. Um, because I was getting her husband and, and Cynthia's man name mixed up, and I can't. I think it's Mark, but I don't know. It is what it is. Um. But yeah, she was asking, you know, how they were upset that I hadn't met your husband yet. But then I got upset with you because I was like, you know, uh, we are really close friends. Like, why wasn't I invited and why why didn't I know? Um, and then Kenny was like, well, yeah, it's just because, you know, y'all are so close. It was weird that, you know, Cynthia wasn't involved in some sort of way. And, you know, Kenny was like, you know, you and meet him. It's okay. It's not a big thing. She's like, you know, he's really in Atlanta. I go to New York every week to see him. Um, so, but, but you'll meet him eventually. She then brings up a PPO that she had against Matt. Now, I don't know what that had to do with her current husband simply because your PPO, you would think if my, your wife has a PPO against a man that you will be trying your best to always have, be there with her. Like, why she keep flying out you? But I'm not going to pick apples and oranges on her fruit farm. I'm letting it be what it be. She's happy. We're happy. We are happy for her. And I don't want to speak negatively on nobody else's relationship. Because I'm trying to start some new relationships myself. So, you know, it is what it is. So, it was funny because when Kenya said, like, you know, he's always, you know, he's always in New York. Cynthia was like, well, I was just in New York. The other day, I could have popped in and met him and took a picture and everything. So, you know, Cynthia's like, she just wished she could have met him so that when people come at her about the situation, she can be like, yes, he's real. Yes, I met him. See, he can go a selfie. You know what I'm saying? And I get that. I get what Cynthia is saying. But I also get the fact that Kenya is keeping him away from the show. And I feel like she feel like if she has him meet anyone from the show, that he can be like, I don't want to be on the show. And so I don't want to meet your co-workers on the show. So I'm thinking that could be a thing too. And if they brand new and if he don't want to be involved with her TV life, he might be like, well, let me meet them when y'all ain't shooting. You know, let me meet them when the season is over and done with and I don't have to worry about being caught on camera or being in news or whatever. Who knows? But, you know, they've met since then, so it's cool. Um, they then would start talking about um, Sheree and her boo. And, of course, that same picture with her at the wifey or whatever. And, you know, Kenya was cracking jokes saying, you know, she better call Tyrone. And I'm like, damn, she really would have got named Tyrone. And when she can't call Tyrone, Tyrone got to call her. But she really got to call Tyrone's situation because somebody got to call to get, you know what I'm saying, stuff. But he can't use her phone because he's in prison. Do you just be a fact? So, yeah, I'm Portia. Portia is, don't even need to be on the season. Portia should, should have been fired with Phaedra. Simply because Portia's only storyline is the fact that Nene don't like her and her situation with Candy. Other than that, she has no purpose on the show. You know, this, her whole scene was, you know, she's meeting with some matchmakers. She's trying to get back into the dating scene. You know, she's been divorced from her ex-husband, I can't, was Cordell, for five years. You know, she's like, I had a couple of relationships in between the time. You know, me and my last ex, we kind of cool. We still friends. Um, but it's like, is the only people she dated was the guy that she on the show? She ain't like no sad boo, but I guess it is what it is. Um, she says that she's open to this world. She, you know, she doesn't discriminate. She'll date whoever, you know, black, white, or indifferent. Good for her because I swear, I be wanting to date a white man, but I can't bring myself to date a white man. And it's because I think his penis would be weird because it's white, which is very weird. But I'm like, I'm happy she's open to date other people. Maybe y'all date a white man. I don't know. We got to see about that. So, you know, but then she said how, you know, since she's been a vegetarian, the, being a vegan has made her really horny. Is, does that, I, Portia's a bit of an idiot, so I don't know if that's a true fact and I didn't Google it. You know, she brings up how she's been having, like, orgy thoughts and she's always thinking about eggplants and cucumbers. You can think about eggplants and cucumbers even when you're not a vegetarian, girl. I mean, Portia's just crazy. You know, she wants the basic stuff that women want. She wants supportive, successful, confident, and wants a family. Okay, you want the basic things. You don't want anything that's different. Um, they, like, walk around the house and get a better feel for who she is. Now, she had a little beautiful bedroom. You know, it was absolutely beautiful. It was spacious and stuff. It was clean. However, she go into another room, and it was... 
I don't know if it was a makeshift closet, but there was literally a queen size bed frame and an air mattress on the inside of it. I'm like, who is sleeping in the struggle bedroom? Like, is this where your assistant sleep? Because I'm like, you couldn't even get a real mattress. Like, you can, because it was, it was a full size air mattress, but it was placed inside of either a king or a queen, um, headboard bed frame. I'm looking like, y'all couldn't get the right, I mean, this the right size, girl. I mean, okay. So they do set her up on a blind date, you know, later on in the episode. I was going to get it all out, out the way. She don't like the guy. He was a white guy, bald. He seemed awkward, but so did she. Um, and I think he probably was awkward because she was awkward because she walked in and was about to walk back out when she saw him. Um, you know, she didn't even sit down, but then she said, you know, I live, my, my mom lives with me, so I just snuck out to meet with you for like 30 minutes after go back home. Girl, is you too? <sighs> I just feel like once you leave the house and go on a date and you get there, just enjoy the damn day. Even if y'all ain't going to make it be what it's going to be. As long as the person not rude and mean and stinky and being an asshole. Because you never know what kind of connection you can make. And even if it isn't a relationship connection, y'all can be friends for life. He can be a business investor. Who knows? But, I mean, she was very much standoff and she was a little... You can tell she didn't want to be there, basically. You know, and they were talking and he's like, what do you do? She said, I'm I'm on a show called Dish Nation. And he was like, oh, you don't even seem like you, you have a big ego at all. And she was like, do I look like I have an ego? And he was like, well, yeah, usually pretty girls have big egos, you know. And so I was something off about them. And I was like, that was weird to say to somebody. It was kind of crazy. And she looked like, well, damn, you know. And she's like, yeah, I look like you. When I get home, I take my wig off. And I, I don't, I'm bald and plain face or whatever. They do like a little shot, um, like a Jaeger. Is it called a Jaeger? When you put liquor in your beer and you drink it. And then they took the little shot or whatever. You're like, okay, yeah, baby, now you'll loosen up. And she was like, oh, ha, 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 You know, no, I'm going to go. And then the day was over. Again, I didn't care. And that's how that we saw a portion of this whole episode. Next, um, Sylvia and Peter meet up. They are business partners in the building they bought like three years ago when they were still married. And Cynthia is still 25% partner in it and it's basically going to be bar two you know peter has bar one um and then he has sports one in charlotte and they are booming everyone knows they're like popular which is weird because when he had the first bar one in atlanta that one kind of closed down it wasn't doing too good but since then he's kind of rebranded himself put him in different states and you know simply like you know so i want to make that money so they're partners because they bought the rubber state the, they bought the Location together and she's 25% partner. So I mean, but Cynthia goes to this construction site And she's dressed to the nines. Okay, she's dressed down like hair fabulous You know, she has a nice little dress and heels and she walked in Peter like you were that to the, to the construction site Cynthia straight up dressed up because she was seeing Peter because when she saw Peter the first thing she said was Oh, you know uncle Ben looking real hot like he can boil some rice. I'm looking like Cynthia Y'all divorced my mom. Let it go. Like, don't fall back into that trip just because he, you know, and Peter is a nice old, older gentleman. I get it. And, you know, but girl, y'all divorced, leave it alone. But you can tell they still like each other. Like, I think they just know they're not made to be married. And they're still getting over probably being compat compatible, 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 compatible uh, physically and sexually and not relationship-wise as a couple for the long haul. Um, cause he didn't say how great she looked and she, you know, don't look 50 at all. She, she looked 32. So Cynthia look my age. I'm 30, well, I'm 35. So then you gonna say Cynthia look younger than me? Okay, Peter. Okay, Peter. Um, so, you know, it was what it was. You know, she said she still follow him on social media. He said he still follow her on social media. And he said, yeah, I was trying to get a look at your boyfriend. She was like, well, you know, I don't have a boyfriend, but I did meet someone and I like him. His name, his name is Will. And then, you know, Peter said, like, tell him I said hello or whatever. You know, Cynthia was saying, like, me and Peter both have moved on, so it is what it is. And, you know, Peter says how, you know, it took some time for them to get used to this new dynamic of them no longer being married. Um, but still, like, caring for each other. So, you know, it is what it is. We'll probably see this new bar, too on season 11 because it's gonna take them four months to build it so that's gonna probably be for the next season Cynthia gonna be a damn barmaid who knows um Sheree 
So Sheree's youngest daughter, who's 17, is going away to college. She's going to Howard University, which is an HBCU. And Cynthia, Cynthia, Lord, Sheree says how she's surprised her daughter is going to, you know, a, a historically black college or university because she's always been like the only black girl in her, in her group or whatever. Which to me is weird because you live in Atlanta. So I'm like, you the only black girl? Like I know Atlanta is very diverse. I get that. But I'm like, she the only black girl? Okay, if you say so. Um, Next we see how Sheree is basically... I um, talking to her kids about the abuse stuff. It was a really easy scene, honestly. You know, it's her first talking about how she, you know, they're taking um, the daughter to Howard for school or whatever. And then she kind of slips in there and says how the National Coalition Against Domestic Violence wanted her to be their ambassador. Now, I told y'all last time when she first talked about that, when she was talking about it with Kenya, how I still don't feel like a person who has not openly and honestly um, came to the truth or the light of what the situation is should be the damn ambassador. I mean, I'm still confused about what really happened. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like an ambassador speaks clearly and honestly about their situation. And I just don't feel like Sheree is at a place yet that she spoke openly and honestly about whatever it was that went on between her and Bob. You know, I feel like we still don't know if he physically abused her, did he mentally abuse her, was it emotional, was it all of the above? Like, I just feel like, this is my personal opinion, as I told y'all before, I've been through it before, a long time ago, a um, long time ago, my early 20s, um, where, you know, you just have to be honest, you know what I'm saying, about it. Like, okay, so when I was between 17 to 23, I had a boyfriend, he was physically abusive, he was mentally abusive, he was emotionally abusive. But I was young, I was stupid, and he wasn't like beating me up every day. But there were definitely times where he put his hands on me. There were definitely times when we fought, and it took time for me to get out of that situation. Um, but once I got out of it, when I see other people, I hear other people who are either going through it, could be going through it, trying to get out of it, I'm able to be honest about, hey, this is what I went through. You're not alone. And I feel like an ambassador should be that person who can see what someone went through and be able to share the experience and make that person feel at ease. Like, okay, they're not the only one. You can't get out. You can't move past and be like, man, I was so dumb for sticking around for that long. So, yeah. Um, but I guess you're going to be an ambassador. It is what it is. So, from there, when she brought that up, she said, you know, I know you guys have been on the internet and you probably heard the rumors, you know, about the abuse and everything. And it was like, Dun, dun, dun. And then the kids kind of look like, okay, so we having this conversation. You know, she asked them kind of like, you know, how they feel when they heard the rumors. And, you know, the oldest one, her daughter, said, she's like, I was just shocked. You know, shocked to hear about it. The youngest one, the daughter, said, you know, dad tried to explain, tried to explain it to me. Um, but I just ended up pulling off because she was trying to explain it to me at one of my soccer games. And I felt like it wasn't the right place. Now, the oldest daughter, who said she was shocked, is not Bob's biological daughter. But her youngest daughter and her son are both Bob's biological children. So, the youngest daughter didn't say how it made her feel. She just said, like, he tried to explain it, but, you know, they didn't talk about it because she left. Um, now the son, who's Cairo, was like maybe I think he's maybe twenty one, twenty two. He's 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 legal. He's 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 an adult, whatever. Um, he seemed like he did not want to have the scene. Like he looked nervous. He didn't want to say the wrong thing. Um, he just said, you know. Um, he said, you know, I don't know. He said, you know, you just never said anything. Um, and that's kind of all he said about it. You know, she just says how she didn't want to, you know ruin their image of their father. I mean, technically, if he was beating you, you know, they have a right to know, I guess. But at the same time, you don't want them hating their father for something their father did if he has, hasn't done it again, if he's gotten help for it, if he's Learn his lesson if he's ch and, and, and if he's changed, cause you you never want a kid to hate their father for making mistakes. The same as you don't want 
you know, parents to hate their mother for making mistakes, you know. So I think it goes both ways because, you know, domestic violence is never okay. But you also don't want a child to hate their parents for mistakes. Like it's, it's, a, it's a tough, you know, it's a tough thing. You know, it's hard. And so it's tough to see the kids have to say how they feel because that's their father and that's their mother. Um, but it looks as if they're, they, they're able to understand that was their parent situation and they still support their mother wholeheartedly but they haven't like said like oh we hate dad so you know it was what it was um what else we see Candy with her family you know um she feels guilty about not being around as much as she could because she's so busy um but you know I feel like you know she said how she's happy to have Todd because he's her husband and you know it's a good thing to have a second parent in the home to be around and everything um, so she's lucky and grateful for him, um, with her daughter being, um, in middle school, no, in high school now, in high school now, um, she just feels bad not being around enough. But my thing is, Candy is the breadwinner. Not to say that Todd isn't, but Candy is the majority of the breadwinner, even though Todd, in his own right, is making money too. You know what I'm saying? He making money moves too. However... Candy is a go-getter. She's a worker, so she's always consistently thinking of ways to make the family money. And the good thing about it is, and what she had to say was, she's like, I always want to work hard so that the kids will see how hard I worked and they will have that same work ethic. But two, if your mama's, you know, a mogul, you can, you can, you can be a mogul too. You know what I'm saying? Candy isn't working just to not be around. I feel like she's hustling because right now the hustling is good. And I think that's smart. If you think about it, sometimes people don't take advantage when it's things coming their way. Um, and then when things are hot no more, basing around broke. So girl, secure the bag. I think you're not doing it in a way where it's detrimental to your family. You know what I'm saying? And we see how dedicated you are to work, being a, a, a worker and a mom and a wife. So, you know, kudos to Candy. Um, we see baby A taking swimming lessons. It was cute, cute, cute. You know, we see her and Riley hanging out at, like, the little place you go when you float up in the air. You be like, it's like flying or whatever. They did that. You know, we do see Riley say how, you know, our mom is gone a lot. And Candy was like, well, you know, we're going to start playing and stuff. And she was like, but you'll just cancel. I was like, oh, damn it, Riley. Damn it, Candy. You know, but again, Candy was saying how, you know, she's going to try her best to do better. And at the end of the day, you know, that's all we can ask for. Um, what else do we have? Cynthia on the date with Will. So, Will sent the car for Cynthia for a little boat date. Uh, Cynthia actually invited, like, most of the couples. But, of course, Kenya and her man couldn't come. Uh, I think she said Nene and Greg was, like, out of, the t out of, out of town. So, Candy and Todd came. Um, Candy is, like, not a fan of Will yet. Because she's like, I want to vet him first. You know, I, I heard about two two shows he did about dating. And I don't know if I like that. You know, Todd, who was forever team Peter. Because Peter's his friend. Like, for him, it's awkward to be around another guy and Cynthia. But, you know, Cynthia, like, you know, me and Todd. I mean, me and, me and Todd, Lord Jesus. Me and Peter is over. You know, y'all need to kind of get over it. Um, You know, Will is kind of saying the same thing. Because they was talking about Peter a little bit on the boat. And he's like, you know, they're over right now. So, you know. Let's talk about something different. So, I thought that was a cool thing. And when King, when Candy was grilling Will, like, I heard you was on this show. I heard you was on that show. You know, what's up with that? You know, are you an opportunist? You know, she then says how when they when she started dating Todd, people kept talking to her about, well, he doing this and he doing that. And he opportunist and he always trying to get, trying to have a come up. Um, so, she said, could Will be like the same thing because if he's consistently on these different on these different TV shows, how do you know that he's not dating you just to be on another show? Honey, but I'm like, it don't really matter because when Kenya, Kenya, damn it, when Kenya and Ty walked up, <laughs> Cynthia and Will was kissing on the boat, boo -boo. I said, okay, go, girl, and kiss them in the mouth, girl, okay, it is what it is. So, you know, but he said that he had done the one show and he was, like, in disguise on a date or whatever. And then the other show, I think someone had asked him to be on the show. He said, but he didn't do the show. But I'm like, if he's single, he's allowed to try to date. You know what I'm saying? Um, especially if, if him and Cynthia isn't exclusive. Because, and I'm like, if it was a show, it had to have been something done before he met Cynthia. So, but I get she's trying to just protect her friend. So, you know, it's cool. Um... 
they were like talking like separately or whatever. So Todd was saying, Todd and Will had a little powwow. They was vibing. It was cool. You know, Todd had said how he was saying to Peter how he didn't want to kind of hang out. And Peter said, look, if you're cool, embrace them. You know what I'm saying? Me and her not together anymore. You know, we see Cynthia saying, like, me and Peter have been divorced for a year. And we both have moved on to different people. So, I don't see what the big issue is. Um, you know, Ken talking to Cynthia saying, I think he's a great guy. Well, he seems like a good guy. Just take your time. And she like, girl, we're not having sex yet. But that kind of scared me because, like, what if I thought I like him a lot. And then we had sex in, in his whack. And she was like, oh, just look at his hands. The only way to tell if someone is good in bed is to sleep with them. And that's all I'm going to say. So, <laughs> Cynthia get back and they all, you know, back in their little powwow thing. And Cynthia going to say, yeah, I was talking to Candy. Like, what if we, you know, hook up and it's not good? And Candy was like, you wasn't supposed to send it to him. And it was like a funny little, she's like, oh, because she's new to dating. So, that was a cute little scene. But they had a good day on the boat, you know, a little double day. And then Candy was able to meet him and then Tyle able to see him too and see him. You know, he's cool. Um, the last thing of the evening. So, you know, uh, Sheree at home. I laughed because Sheree was at home and there was a bug on her porch. And it was a big old, like, water bug. And she was like, move. I'm like, bugs don't speak human. They can't hear you, girl, bye. Um, so that to me was funny. And then we see Jack Daniels is there. Yep, her life coach. So, you know, he come in. She just said how she did tell the kids about... She did talk to the kids about the whole domestic violence thing and how it was a weight off her shoulders and she was happy that she did it. Um, then her phone rings. And she's like, oh, can I take this? And guess who it was? It was Tyrone calling from prison. So, you know, she go back outside where the bug was. Yes, where the bug was. And, you know, he's in a federal prison because he's a federal indictment, okay? Uh, and he's like, you know, hey, babe. Hey, baby, what you doing? Girl, he in prison. He, he doing one or two things. He either just he just came back from working out, he just came back from the kitchen, or he was out there playing basketball. <laughs> it ain't that much. And what did he say? Oh, just came back from working out because he's in prison. He ain't doing shit that's calling you, girl, or watching TV, or sitting around playing chess and checkers. He ain't doing nothing. So, um, she was they just like chit chatting or whatever. And he like yeah, I was just. Working out when you know, think about you and think about how I can't wait to come home and pick you up. I'm just like, hold up, see, that he go already. You ain't been on the phone for two minutes and you want to talk some little dirty talk? Just, just be quiet. So, he then said how he had a flashback of them from the last time they were, um, like around each other, whatever, from years ago. So, Sheree then says, like, six years ago when they were talking. He just kind of out the blue stopped talking to her, and she never knew why. And she says, well, he told her the reason he kind of left her alone was because he had also found out that the feds was looking into him. He said he felt he knew that the feds come from, like, all directions. So they would have been looking into him, looking into her, and just everything. He like, So he just kind of left her alone so that she wouldn't get caught up in whatever illegal activity he had going on. Because I guess at the time, she didn't know. Which is noble. It really is. You know what I'm saying? It was a good thing that he realized that he was doing something illegal and it could hurt her. So he stopped talking about it. Stopped talking to her. But I still feel like, is he lying? Because, like, how do you know if he lying or not, girl? Because how do you know he ain't telling every girl that and you're the first one that believed him? But, you know, it is what it is. So, you know, she's saying how she is just happy. And, you know, I'm just like, girl, I just can't, you know. What else did she say? And she was saying how she's happy to have him back in her life. And I'm like, okay. Okay. Uh, okay. So, she go back to... No, she was saying how she's happy to have him in her life. And then she said she's happy that they are exclusive. Bitch, he is in prison. The reason y'all are exclusive is because he can't date nobody else. Why can't he date nobody else? Because he's in prison. He doesn't have any options. The only other people he can date is either a CO... Or someone else who he's having a phone relationship with. And I'm like, she putting so much into this prison relationship. And it's just only weird because y'all, as she said, he, you know, they had lost touch for a while. I think he was already in there. And then he reached out to her and they've been talking ever since. And it's like, you know, I, just, I love her. <laughs> it was just weird. You know, you know, I'm just like, because she said we are exclusive. Because he is in prison. 
You can't, you know, when you dating someone in prison, there's nothing else you can do besides be exclusive. Because he don't have no choice. Okay? He, unless he, you know, look, I'm not going to go there. So, you know, she go back and sit down and talk to, the, to her life coach. You know, Jack Daniels was like, you know, you was doing a lot of smiling, you know. He was falling over. She's like, oh, was I? Okay. You know, she says, you know, well, I have a boyfriend, you know. And he's like, oh, okay, that's why you've been smiling or whatever. And then she says, he's in prison. And he was like, who's in prison? And she was like, oh, you know, my babe, my boo, he's in prison. And he was like, oh, okay. So, um, he was like, you know, well, people will probably talk and say things. You know, it'll probably be crazy. And she's like, you know what I'm saying? I don't care. Um, uh, I don't care what they say at this point. I don't give a fuck, you know, with the way he treat me. You know what I'm saying? They all going to be wanting to give him a man in prison. Not me. No, thank you. No, ma'am. No, sir. Um, she says how I, she, I love our communication and how he treat me. He is in prison, Sheree. He is in prison. He is in prison. Girl, he is in prison. I don't know how much. Girl, I love his communication. The communication is free of prison phone calls. He don't have shit else to do besides talk. He ain't got nothing else to do. She said how they talk on the phone all day. Right. So, of course, you communicate because he don't have shit else to do, girl. Oh, my Lord Jesus. Straight you old man like this. You know, she then said, well, I love how he treat me. How does he treat you from prison? He can't come take the trash out. I am a firm believer. You cannot take a man serious who's in prison. You cannot. Not if y'all weren't to get if y'all weren't together in a stable situation before a person went to prison, you can't then take them up on I've been in prison for two years. I'ma reach out to so and so. I'ma be such a good man to you. Bitch, stop lying. Don't lie to me. Cause that's what you're doing. Unless y'all were in a relationship and seeing things happen and the person got locked up and you just continuing the relationship through the through the prison sentence. You stupid. Like, Remy Ma and Papoose. Remy and they were together when she went to jail. And they stuck it out the whole seven, eight years. Completely get that. But, y'all were not together when you went to prison. You hadn't talked to that man in a while. Okay? Y'all weren't on good terms. He ghosted you because he was under federal indictment. Girl, bye. I just can't. I can't. I can't. I can't. You cannot take people. You can't. And I don't even mean that to be rude because some people are in prison. They can honestly mean what they say. But any. No. No. Show me when you get home. Like, can we We can talk on the phone? App? We can be cool on the phone? Sure. Okay. I ain't making no promises. I'm not waiting. My, I'm, not, I'm not stopping my life for you. If we supposed to be together, then you will get out and you're supposed to get out and I'm going to be single. But I'm not going to be sitting around waiting. No. Not, mm -mm. No, 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 no. You know, she was saying how, because Jack Daniels said, you know, is this a fantasy? Like, what happens when he comes home? She said, who fantasizes about being a man in prison? You do. Every night. Because that's your boo when he in prison. You fantasize every day about this man because that is your boo when he is in prison. You know, and she said, when he come home, It'll be amazing. We can be together. We can spend time together. We can touch each other. Girl, why are you talk? You are talking like me when I was 20 years old and my fiance at the time was in prison. Okay? That is how you're talking. Now, we were together before you got in jail. But, you know what I'm saying? It was, he gonna get out. You know, he only got a year. You know what I'm saying? It's gonna be so amazing. And we broke up like the year after he got out of jail. Whatever. Um... So, he then said, you know, how long, you know, will he be in there? And she's like, well, you know, he's, by the end of the year, he should be out. She said, but if he doesn't get out by the end of the year, he'll have to do four more years. Meaning, he has for parole at the end of the year. And if he don't get paroled, then he gonna have to do the rest of his four years. And then he says, well, what happens if he doesn't get out? Like, will you lose your soulmate? And cause she said, you know, I know he's my soulmate. You know, I know what we share. And I don't care what anyone has to say. We know what she right, and then the episode went off. When the, the episode went off, when Jack Daniel said, "You know, but what if he doesn't get out? You lose your soulmate." And then it went off. She right. I'm gonna say this time I'm leaving alone. I'm in this video because I'm at 38 minutes. Girl, bye. I mean, I'm all for loving someone and saying, "Oh my God, he's my soulmate." But you can't meet your, you cannot meet your soulmate in prison. I don't care what nobody say because when the person is in prison, they will say whatever because they don't have nothing. You know what I'm saying? You can't. You cannot start. No, if I had to wait for some, if if I couldn't get married unless the, if my husband is in prison, I'm gonna be single forever.
okay? I won't meet him until he's ass out of jail. And he better not be in there for nothing. Well, you gotta, well, you can't be like a murderer or a raper or whatever. But I mean, I just, no, I don't. I just cannot. She said, he, I love how we communicate and how he treat me. We are inclusive. Bitch, he is in prison. Okay? P R I S O N. Prison. And that's all I'm gonna say about this. So I am Jay Lee. This is Jay Lee's Corner. Peace.